Okay, moving on to question six. Uh, this one is quite tricky. By first glance, you may think that, oh, the net acceleration is uh, forward and therefore uh, the largest force must be the thrust from the jet engine. Okay, but uh, the question is actually asking you which is the largest force component. Okay, if you think about that, then uh, because the acceleration is only towards the front and uh, they ask you, they tell you that uh, we shouldn't consider any resistive force. So meaning that actually this uh, thrust from engine, okay, will be the net forward force. So if you apply your Newton's second law here, your F net will be equals to MA. And because in the horizontal direction, your F net is just the thrust force. So the acceleration is two, so it will be M times 2. So you get 2m for your thrust force. Okay, if you look at your weight of this plane, uh, you know that the weight is, is, is equals to mg, which is 10m. Okay, so just by looking at these two force, you can see that 10m is definitely bigger than 2m. Okay, and why are these two force uh, not being considered? Because uh, the acceleration is only towards the front. It means that the vertical force components must be equal. So you will know that your weight must be equal to the leaf okay, plus the force from the wheel. So meaning that your weight is already 10m and uh, your leaf plus your F wheel act together then equals to 10m. So it means that uh, definitely L and FW must be smaller than uh, 10m if you consider them individually. So therefore your largest force is actually uh, the weight and not the other three forces. So uh, this question is quite tricky. Okay, if you look at uh, question 7, question 7 is quite intuitive. Uh, all the options are already along the vertical line. So you have to look at the shape of this uh, cut. So you notice that uh, if you divide the cut into half. Okay, you can see that uh, most of the material are in the lower portion. So meaning that the center of gravity, which means most of the weight, okay, would act at C. Okay, it is impossible at D because there's nothing below. Okay, you cannot the center of gravity cannot be at the edge. Okay, so it has to be C. Uh, okay, question eight. Uh, you have to assume that both the spring are made up of the same uh, material. So the spring constant is the same. Uh, spring constant uh, basically determine the ratio at which uh, how much force will cause how much extension. So with that uh, assumption, then you can solve this question. So basically the question says that uh, this W is moved towards the pivot. So if you consider the moment caused by the weight of this object, uh, W times uh, the distance between this point and the pivot, by moving the load closer to the pivot, actually this moment will, this uh, moment caused by this would reduce. So in a way, initially everything is balanced. When you move this thing closer, this moment is going to um, reduce. So what happened is that initially both the moment here and here is balanced. So when you have this reduce, so at that instance, the moment at this point would be larger than this one. So what happened is that the lever would tilt up and hence the length of X would increase and the length of Y would decrease. Uh, question 9, uh, it is pretty straightforward except that uh, it actually kind of uh, bring in some mathematics here with the 50%. So uh, they tell you that the crane want to lift the load and all that. Uh, you can use work done. So this 100 kilogram, uh, when you are using work done, you have to convert this into weight. So that's why for the work done output, I multiply the 10 here. So this uh, output work done 
is actually from the crane, right? And the crane actually has an efficiency of 50%. Means that this value, the 300, uh, the 30,000 joules is the output. And the output is only 50% of the input. Because that is what efficiency means. So with that, you just change the output in terms of input. So the output is equal to 50% of the input and the output is 30,000. So once you have this uh, equation set up, you can calculate the input. Okay, question 10. Uh, question 10, you need to understand that when you are calculating work done, the force has to be, the force factor has to be in the same direction as your direction factor. So what happened here is that they give you the mass which will give you the weight of 50 Newton. But in this case, the object is moving in the horizontal direction. So you see that the force factor and the direction factor is perpendicular. So it means that there is no vertical component for movement in this context. So the movement in the up-down position is actually zero. So when you take 50 Newton, you must multiply by the vertical distance travel, which is zero, you will get zero joules. Okay, so remember when you are calculating, calculating work done, the distance factor that you are going to choose has to be the same direction as your force factor. So in this case, the direction factor, which is the up and down motion is zero. So therefore, work done is zero.